I really wanted to do this lecture for quite a while, especially we since we've been all on, on uh, lockdown. This is uh, this is the lecture that is recorded after uh, a prolonged period of uh, being in at, at home due to the COVID virus. As you know, we were all forced to stay home, and eat our food at home, uh, being anxious eating a little bit too much. And what helped me to stay on track of my health and my cons food consumption is there, there's fasting mimicking food plan that I learned about probably a year ago, but I finally committed to do it three months in a row. And it fell right into their March of 2020 when we all went to their uh, on quarantine. So since it wasn't my plan, I had to do it. So I did their fasting mimicking diet, which is five days of the food plan that we're gonna talk about. Uh, I did it in March, April, and May, and actually in June as well. So um, it really helped me to reset my metabolism, to reset my appetite, to discipline myself in um, my attitude towards food, um, control my anxiety, but what's more importantly, it helped me to heal certain symptoms that I've been dealing with, like a little bit of lower back pain, a little bit of feet pain. Those symptoms actually miraculously disappear during my five days of fasting mimicking diet. So that's why I wanted to share it with all my patients and all people who are not my patients yet, but hopefully will be, and who are on this call. So the importance of fasting and how rejuvenating and reparative fasting can be. And for those of you who uh, know a little bit about me, we probably know how much my parents influenced me in my choice of uh, my profession of becoming a healthcare provider and medical doctor, but most importantly to be looking into alternative medicine as a great source of information. My father, who is now 80 years old, uh, started fasting when he was about 36. So it's been a good 40 years uh, plus for him to practice fasting and I've been growing up witnessing it. And I witnessed him going from a uh, chain smoker, he smoked two packs a day, uh, to a marathon runner. And uh, now at 80, he runs every morning and he swims in the ocean all year around. And he still continued to do fasting. So he kind of influenced me um, on, on appreciation of fasting. And I would always look at him and say, well, this is, there's no clinical evidence of it until there is. Uh, there, we found, uh, apparently there was a lot of research work done on fasting. And the work I'm going to present to you today is a huge body of work dedicated to learning what fasting does for us and how rejuvenative and reparative it can be. So without further ado, I want to start talking about fasting, and we're gonna be talking about product that makes fasting much more manageable and easy to implement in our lives. Because I'm honestly, I have to say that I'm a weak uh, person. I cannot water fast. I tried, it makes me feel horrible. I cannot function. But with the, this product that I want to talk today about, I'm able to not just function, but feel great and grasp all the amazing benefits of fasting. So, why people fast? There's different reasons why people fast. Some people fast to reduce calories consumption because they want to lose weight. Other people want to lose percentage of fat in the body, which is a little bit different from just weight. And some people just want to do it for cosmetic reasons because they want to have a better waistline. And other people I know try to fast because they need to do the te blood test before they go for their life insurance and they, they need to improve their test results. Or maybe because your primary care told you that you have elevated cholesterol level and you need to uh, eat healthier. So people go on fasting and trying to improve their blood test. Some people fast because they notice that it gives them more energy. 
Because we know that food, especially food that we are sensitive to, or sensitive in terms, not in a good way, but in a bad way, might cause fatigue right after meals. And just for your information, if sometimes you eat and you feel like you crashed and you want to sleep, most likely you're sensitive to some foods in, in the meal that you ate. And some people actually looking for fasting as a treatment for elevated blood pressure. So whatever it is, fasting can help with it. And if you ever said, I'm struggling to lose body fat and weight, but don't want to lose the lean muscle mass, and that's what actually sometimes fasting can do, especially water fasting, people would lose muscle mass more than fat. Or if you're saying that I'm interested in helping my, to maintain healthy level of cholesterol and glucose, fasting can help with that. If you're saying that I'm looking for the end, increase my energy level and make healthier choices with my food, fasting may help. And if you are looking for just feel rejuvenated, and this is probably my goal and my secondary gain from doing fasting, this is there uh, actually can help as well. Fasting can help with that. And we'll talk about it. So what is fasting? Fasting has been for years around, and basically it's a process when we say we're not going to eat or drink uh, anything except for their water, probably. Well, sometimes we don't even drink water. Some cultures utilize fasting when they do not consume any water or food. But what happens in the cellular level, we know that there are some certain biological, biochemical pathways and they're listed right here, like PKA pathway, or IGF-1, or mTOR. Those pathways are all connected to longevity or to shorter lifespan. So we know that food can influence those pathways, and that's been shown in the clinical trials. So these pathways are triggered up to 24 hours after the last meal. So biological fasting actually starts after 24 hours of the last meal. And I know that a lot of people are into intermittent fasting and it's been uh, publicized and very popular recently that people are, oh yeah, I do intermittent fasting, which is usually somewhere between 12 and 18 hours. So let's say you have a dinner at six o'clock and you don't have uh, any next your next meal until noon of the next day, that's the intermittent fasting. But we actually know that even though the intermittent fasting has its own wonderful benefits, the pathway that we are trying to influence because they're related to longevity are not in, influenced up until we fast for more than 24 hours. And then there's, of course, there's some misconception when people say, oh, I'm fasting, but I'm drinking fruit juice or vegetable juice. And of course, this is not fasting at all. So what is fasting is a, it's originated in the ancient evolution and healing tradition across millennia. Almost every religion has a fasting uh, periods, right? In Christianity, in Ju Judaism, in Muslim cultures and, um, Hindu cultures, so every um, religion also has a fasting. And we know that it definitely supports the metabolic health. But it, what it also does, it supports the cellular cleanup that leads to cellular regeneration. We call it autophagy, auto meaning self, and phagy, phagia meaning eating, and it's in, uh, basically their combined term, that means that our own body starts eating its own debris, eating its own old cells. And because body goes through this cleanup process of eating up the old cells, it starts stimulating its own stem cells production. And the circulating cells, stem cells, the quantity and the quality of circulating stem cells will increase. And that's when the repair starts happening. 
It also impacts markers associated with increased in human longevity and lifespan through those sensitive pathways that I just mentioned to you. So there's really a lot of benefits to fasting. And as I already mentioned, fasting has been in the mind of consumers for the last several years. In 2018, through this survey, it's been shown that actually fasting or calorie restricting diets has been dominating the diet uh, markets. And intermittent fasting has been uh, taking the lead in that. So this is not new. And as we're gaining more evidence of beneficial eff effects of fasting, we gaining more and more information and more research is done. So few words about types of fasting. As I already mentioned, time-restricted eating or feeding, which could be either daily or several times a week, is when we fast from the dinner to the, uh, to the next meal in the morning. And it can be anywhere from 8 to 12 hours. Does it have benefits? Absolutely. It, it creates the benefits, but not as profound as their fasting that lasts more than 24 hours. So the intermittent fasting, from one to three days of fasting, usually not consecutive, consecutive and per week. But the prolonged fasting, when you start fasting for more than three days, consecutive days, when you drink only water, that's called water fast, but also their fasting mimicking diet that we will talk today about, specifically the product of Prolone that I've been experience, uh, experimenting with, has been a revolutionary finding on, their, on the field of their fasting. And this is the comparison of which fasting type is actually provides what kind of benefits. As you can see, all of those categories of fasting like calorie restrictions, or intermittent fasting, or time-restricting feeding, or prolonged fasting, or fasting-mimicking diet, more or less all of them will cause the loss of weight. Obviously, for good reasons, we are reducing the calorie consumption. However, now this is a very important topic because we don't want to lose a healthy body composition. And what is healthy body composition? Body, the healthy body um, muscle mass or lean body mass is extremely important for us because muscles is a metabolic organ. It actually works for us. It also associated with the prolonged longevity. So people with their lower muscle mass live not as long as people with their uh, more robust body muscle mass. And fasting mimicking diet is the only one that preserves the muscle mass. And this is actually from my personal experience. I can tell you that my dad, he's not obviously doing fasting mimicking diet. He's doing fasting, water fast. And he unfortunately lost a lot of body muscle mass. And I'm always concerned because at 80, he has a difficult time to build it back. And I always tell him like, at least eat more proteins when you're eating. But this is, this is a big difference compared to other uh, fasting uh, food plans. All of those fasting practices will improve your cholesterol. All of them will improve your blood glucose. So for the people who have insulin resistance, and we all will get insulin resistant at some point of our lives because we're just wearing off our insulin producing cells in the pancreas. So earlier or later, we all will get to the insulin resistance. This, um, this two methods of fasting, like prolonged fasting as a water fast, as well as fasting mimicking diet, will make a huge impact on controlling the glucose in the body. But look, this is the process that I am attracted most of, the, of all. Cellular cleaning and increasing circulating the stem cells. None of this fasting practices, except for the water fast and the fasting mimicking diet, will increase cellular cleanup and rejuvenative or reparative processes due to the stem cell production. And of course, with uh, some food plans, you consume foods and some you don't. 
with calorie restriction, you still eat with intermittent fasting, you still eat with, with a shorter period of time, you still eat with a time restricting diet, you do not consume any foods with a prolonged fasting, just water, and with a fasting mimicking diet, you do eat some food, but just in a small quantity. And here's a couple of slides that uh, outline the benefits of water fast. Yes, you lose weight. La yes, you improve your metabolic health, your blood sugar, your cholesterol profile. Yes, you improve your cellular cleaning and reparative processes with the water fast, and you support stem cell production. But it is really difficult to do. I don't know if any of you did the water fast for more than one day. I personally cannot do that in spite of watching my dad fasting for two weeks straight. He does, it doesn't really preserve your body, lean body mass, which is a big drawback and um, disadvantage. You definitely deprive your body from micro and micronutrients. It, it does increase your gallstone risk um, as per data. And that's where the fasting mimicking diet um, has an advantage compared to water fast. The only one disadvantage of fasting mimicking diet that it's expensive to some extent. I mean, it's not that expensive, but it is, you have to pay for it. But otherwise, uh, it outlines, it, it, uh, it, it outgrows all the benefits of the fasting with the water. So what is fasting mimicking diet? It provides you all these important elements and it is a breakthrough product. First of all, it's completely natural. It's made of the whole food and plant-based. Secondary uh, benefit that it's been studied in the vigorous uh, research by National Institute of Health and university-based research and development group. So we know it's been studied, uh, meticulously studied uh, for multiple endpoints trials. It had went through the vigorous clinical research with the preclinical and clinical trials. So we know how it affects not only mice, but also humans. It is patented and very innovative. And it's published, the results of the studies that were actually sponsored by, by NIH, published in the top medical journals. Things, uh, journals like Cell, Science, Translational Medicine, and JAMA. So it has a really strong science, um, scientific um, background. So let's walk through the five days of fasting mimicking diet and what biological effects we experience on each of consecutive days. So on day one of the fasting state, it basically just primes the body to transition into the fasting state body is kind of in the shock. It's like, wait a minute, I'm not consuming, I'm not getting in the same amount of nutrients. Uh, let me adjust to it. And it starts, body starts actually, it has time to uh, optimize cellular regulation. On day two of the fast mimicking diet, when you start consuming a special drink, it's called L, uh, L drink, you start actively burning the fat, but continue to preserve your muscle mass. So on day two, the body switches to fat burning mode and the cellular recycling and cleanup begins. And day three, when the consumption of the food is actually decreased to a minimum, that's when you start cleaning up the house. You start cleaning, uh, doing the cellular cleaning. And cellular cleanup continues for most people. Most people will reach the ketosis. But this is the state when the body has a chance to finally do the cleanup. It's like a good housekeeper cleans the house in the best possible way when nobody's at home, right? The same thing here. When we don't consume food, body doesn't have to deal with their... Uh, digesting and assimilation and processing all those nutrients that are coming to the to 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 the gastrointestinal tract three to five times per day. Finally, the gut is at rest. 
there's no nobody walking in the kitchen so the good housekeeper can clean the, the floor wipe up the, the dust and do their really good cleaning this is what uh, our body is getting a chance to do when we are on this uh, fasting or fasting mimicking diet on day four finally our stem cells start waking up um, and the cellular cleaning continues and we enhance stem cells production and where do these stem cells go they go to the place where the repair needs to happen uh, in the first priority so body will prioritize where's the the, the repair where's the cleanup needs to be done first where do we need to remove all the old debris cells, cells that's been sitting there and body never got a chance to clean it up. Now we finally go through this process of, of autophagy, removing the old debris, recycling their nutrients from the broken membranes and old cellular debris, and the new stem cells are waking up in our bone marrow and they rush into the place to repair. Either it's your heart, or it's your liver, or it's our kidney, or it's our brain, that's when the regeneration starts on day four. And on day five, which is the last day, um, but we need to, when we go through the program, it's so important to complete the fifth day all the way to the sixth, the, to the morning of the sixth day, we start really regeneration, regenerative processes. And it promotes self-repair an increasing set of circulating stem cells that rush into the place where the repair needs to take place. This is a really great slide for those of us who want to lose weight in a healthy way and specifically get rid of the fat that is most inflammatory fat, which is in our abdominal uh, area. And it's not the, we call it visceral fat. It's not this uh, fat that is under the skin or subcutaneous fat. This is actually a fat that is surrounding our internal organs. Fat that is accumulated around our heart, heart fat that is accumulated around the liver, around their other organs and intestines. And that fat, we call it visceral fat, is most inflammatory. So this is their, basically, CAT scan studies that where the the you you can see in the red color is the visceral fat around the organs, and this is their transverse cut of the CAT scan. And so this is in the beginning of the study, and this the same person after three courses of the fasting mimicking diet, five days each month, um, once a month, you can appreciate the amount of the visceral fat decreased dramatically. And this is just their uh, number representation of how their um, body weight changed during the fast fasting mimicking diet and how body weight decreased, but it's not just your body weight uh, in, in pounds, but it also fat reduction in the visceral fat. Of course, not everybody will get this dramatic effect but some people do, and uh, people do notice a reduction in the waist circumference and, of course, overall weight loss. And for majority of the people, uh, the weight loss was 5.2 pounds and 1.2 one and one and inches on, uh, in waist circumference reduction. And for more overweight people, obviously the weight loss was even more significant. But that's for those who are interested in the weight loss. Obviously, we're getting so many different benefits. So this person is Dr. Longo, who was a pioneer in the research of fasting mimicking diet. He, uh, with his research team at the University of Southern, uh, South, uh, Southern California, uh, developed the product and also researched it with the National Institute of Health. The National Institute of Health actually invested, uh, donated a grant for public health purposes to figure out how fasting mimicking diet affects uh, human body and human longevity. And what they found, again, I'm just going back to the same interesting pathways 
IGF-1, TOR, mTOR, and PKA, those are nutrient-sensing pathway that related to longevity and related to the aging. And fasting mimicking diet, as well as water fast, benefits this pathways. And by the way, uh, if you didn't see this, his book, this book is um, offered as a gift for anyone who is participating in today's poll and for anyone who is ordering the product. It's a great book to read to get into the depth of the processes and understanding of what really happens during the fasting. So there's multiple benefits as I outlined. It definitely, my favorite is it promotes cellular cleanup, it reduces the body fat and weight, and it decreases hormones like IGF-1 that is related to uh, insulin sensitivity, as well as growth hormone production, which has been implicated in aging and disease progression and chronic disease. So the results of the studies that were done um, in the Dr. Longo's laboratory at University of Southern California found that definitely fasting mimicking diet helps us to rejuvenate. It improves the wellness and health optimization and, and it improves the lifespan and longevity. It also showed amazing benefits for weight loss. And this is their uh, also effect on their, not only on the body um, weight, but also into the visceral fat and circumference of the waistline. It does preserve the lean body mass, muscles and bones, which is really important for us. And it's only five days of lifestyle change per month. For three months, that's what you need to commit to, to grasp those benefits. And very interestingly, that the body weight loss that uh, participants observed remained or was um, persistent even after people returned to their previous diet. Obviously, we hope that everybody will return to the healthier uh, eating diet uh, in between those five days courses, but the weight loss was actually maintained. So I personally, when I did it through their, this whole COVID, what I call COVID diet, I'm trying to... Uh, uh, so ending the COVID diet, that was one of my titles for this talk, is because doing this five days once a month disciplines you, resets your metabolism, helps change your microbiome and change your uh, satiety, and which is a feeling of satisfaction with the amount of food. It definitely helps you to eat less and stay on that for a whole month until your next reset button a month later. So I uh, definitely um, experience and benefit from it. So definitely a lot of participants in the study noticed not only um, benefits in the energy and uh, weight loss, but also inflammatory markers were significantly reduced during the study. So. Uh, participants were tested for a variety of inflammatory markers, including the non-specific inflammatory marker of C-reactive protein. Many of you know about it. It's a non-specific marker, but during this five days of fasting mimicking diet, CRP and other inflammatory markers uh, went re were reduced significantly. And also uh, uh, participants noticed improve in the glucose level control for the diabetics or people with insulin resistance. People who noticed improvement in cholesterol profile, in blood pressure, and of course triglycerides. And that's not a news for many of us. We understand why. Also, participants improved um, energy level, feeling of getting better control of their lifestyle choices, and just a positive impact on their lifestyle. Of course, it's very subjective, but this was reported as a result of the studies. So after one fasting mimicking diet per month, for three months, and that's how the study was conducted. It wasn't just one month or so one session of the fasting mimicking diet. It was three 
month, consecutive months. People observe improvement of uh, glucose sensitivity or insulin resistance. Um, they people improve their cholesterol profile and blood pressure. So for some for some people who have a struggle with the blood pressure control, that can be amazing uh, benefit. Participants notice the reduction in inflammatory markers, improvement of stem cells, and actually this uh, led to their patent on regeneration and health span. This is this this uh, finding of improvement of stem cells became a cause or reason for a patent on regeneration and health span, and of course people improve their lean body mass. They maintain the lean body mass without losing it, which improves the bone health and rejuvenation. So it's beneficial for people with osteoporosis or um, reduction of the um, muscle mass. And of course, people lose a lot of abdominal or visceral fat. So, and that's the result. So as a part of this, um, lecture i'm inviting everyone who participates do it together so we're going to do it as a group i will do it with you and we as i suggest we're all going to start on july 27th uh, so today is july 17th so we have 10 days to order our products to kind of set up our calendar to clean it up so you don't have any social engagements during that week of july 27th to july 31st which is five days and we're going to day go um, one day at a time, and we'll do their Zoom meetings at night of two days on Tuesdays, on Tuesday and on Thursday. We're going to do two Zoom meetings for everyone to jump in, ask any questions, or share the experiences, and just support each other as a community to do this program again. And as our, uh, if you decide to choose to participate in this program, We'll be happy to share some of their um, promotional features and everybody will get their promotional book that I said uh, of Dr. Longo explaining the longevity diet or fasting mimicking diet. And we also offer some special pricing if you sign up for three kids. And now uh, I would like to um, switch the gears and actually invite a representative, Sarah Price, who is online with us. She's a representative of company El Nutra that produces fasting mimicking diet called Prolone. And um, Sarah and I will take some questions. And this actually, this picture shows some of the products that are included in the Prolone kit. And I actually do have a kit here for those of you who've never seen this kit. It's right here and it includes five boxes. So the idea is when you're on the fasting mimicking diet, this is the box for day one. And you would need to finish everything that is in this box. So we'll um, go more, we'll go in more details to discuss that uh, once you sign up. And it's pretty self-explanatory. It's really easy to implement. Uh, there's a lot of good literature that supports their, the plan. And, um, but I'll be more than happy to, any, to answer any questions. So feel free to uh, write your uh, questions in the chat box or just unmute yourself and ask, ask a question. Sarah, are you here? Yes, yes I am. And I finally have my uh, sound working. Oh, good, good, good. So I, I, if you, any of the participants already experienced uh, prolong fasting mimicking diet and would like to share your experience uh, please do so I'll be more than happy to um, we'll be more than happy to hear you I was say I'm actually on day what am I on day two <laughs> today uh, yes today is day two oh good so what yeah. is there your number what is your session this is your session what today? Five. Gosh, I think this, I know, right? It, practically, practically. I think it actually might be 18. And uh, <laughs> do you want to share you... your experience yeah. of uh, health benefits? Yeah, totally. I 
I mean, some of the things, especially that I find, um, you know, even looking back to the first time that I did a cycle of prolon, um, I noticed, you know, that, you know, I was feeling really run down. I was traveling a lot for work um, and I had a terrible, terrible sleep, sleep pattern. Um, I had spent 13 years as an ICU nurse working at night. And so the idea of, of having a good night's sleep was just pretty much an unheard of concept for me. So um, over the course of the first cycle, I noticed like I, did, I particularly didn't sleep all that great. I mean, that can sometimes happen. But what I found over the course of several cycles is suddenly, finally, like I actually started sleeping really well at night. And then one of the things that I found, especially within probably the last year is that I, uh, I want to go to bed at 10. Like my body goes to bed at 10 and my eyes pop open at around five o'clock in the morning. And it feels so, so natural and so normal. And this is something that we hear really frequently too. Um, I had somebody, another, it's actually another healthcare provider who like she would stay up until two or three in the morning and then um, not, uh, she kept, you know, kind of later hours, but uh, didn't get up until, you know, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock or so in the morning. And she's, you know, emailing me after her, um, I think it was her second cycle. And she was like, I don't know why, but I am starting to get really tired at night. And I was like, oh, good. This is a good sign. <laughs> this is a good sign. Going to bed at, at, you know, you know, a couple of hours or so after after sunset is is what our bodies are meant to do um so for me um with the first cycle you know some of the things that i noticed on that time is that you know i felt okay afterwards after the first one i was like okay you know you know i felt a little bit more energy felt a little bit more clear-headed um but for me it wasn't actually until the second cycle that i actually by the time I finished the second cycle and I had started eating again, I was like a hummingbird flying around the room. I had so much energy. And as a patient who has uh, multiple autoimmune conditions, that's not necessarily really a common, a common way to feel. Um, so it was a huge changeover for me. And actually from that point, I called the company and said I needed to work for them. Um, so it was actually, I came to this company as a consumer first, um, but I, I experienced, had such an amazing experience with it that I ended up joining the company. And do you mind to share, because I know your story. Uh, I know, I know your uh, autoimmune uh, history. Can you hear me? Oh, there yeah, we go. Sorry. Yeah. I, I know your autoimmune history. Do you mind to share with the participants your autoimmune story? Um, yeah, unfortunately, I can, I can only share just a little bit. I do um, just kind of do to, you know, the, a lot of the things that there that, you know, we are still looking at from the study perspective. Um, but I do have Hashimoto's, Sjogren's and celiac. Um, so, you know, for anybody who's concerned about gluten, um, the prolon, is, although it's not certified gluten-free, um, it is gluten-free. The um, one piece that's made on a shared line um, has tested completely negative. So um, that is safe for celiacs. But um, I think particularly um, interesting is the fact that as an autoimmune patient, you're usually run down and foggy-headed, um, and you just never feel you have any energy. And that's been the biggest thing for me, is the fact that I mean, I remember after that second cycle, I was like, oh my God, this is what people, must, like normal people must feel like. like this is amazing. Um, and that's something we commonly, commonly find is that even most people, they don't realize, they don't realize how run down they are. Um, and the way that this helps to really elevate, um, I mean, even just your mood, um, energy focused, I mean, Everything, and to me, I'm always like everything about life just kind of brighter and um, so much more energy to go after things yeah. um, is really, really interesting. It's a very common piece that we hear, even uh, in, in my experience, uh, I think we just lost uh, Sarah, but it's, it's really interesting what she's saying that circadian rhythm um, is definitely resetting. Sarah, are you back with us? Uh, circadian rhythm is definitely yeah. setting. We lost you for a second, Sarah, but I'm just taking over yeah, in terms so of uh, describing that circadian rhythm reset is something that I definitely have to commit, uh, confirm that I usually, um, a midnight owl, you know, when everybody is asleep, then I start working and, and catching up with all my tasks. But when I'm on prolone, 10 o'clock, uh, I'm giving myself, not just giving myself a permission, 
I need to go and sleep. And then I wake up earlier and um, I'm much more functional. What it does, what did help me doing it now for four cycles, uh, consecutive cycles, is that I can go through my day with just one prolonged bar, which is a really high quality nut bar that I really enjoy and appreciate. I can have my breakfast, um, which is usually either protein shake or like high protein, low glycemic uh, breakfast, and then have a prolonged bar around three, four o'clock, two, three o'clock, and then be totally satisfied until the dinner time. And not just be not hungry, my brain is working well. I guess I am, my body is learning how to switch to ketosis much faster, and I, I feel good energy too. So it's definitely helping me to go through my clinical day without interrupting for lunch. Um, I don't know if it's a good thing or not, but it's definitely helping me with my yeah. um, production, uh, productivity mm -hmm. and, yeah. and not to feel tired or fatigued yeah. or brain fog. Yeah, I think that the interesting thing with that is that you know, everybody's like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. I would get so hungry and irritable. And what we really like, I think it's a great, that right there is a great reminder that hey, the idea of being hangry is not normal. That's not a normal response to being hungry. The reason that you're able to make it through is because you're able to easily access fat for energy and your body's not, you know, kind of in this state of like panic. And so that I think is a, a huge, you know, thing that people don't realize is that being irritable, hungry is just not necessary. And especially, you know, when you've just eaten a few hours earlier, that's not a normal state to be in. And that right. tells us that there's something amiss in terms of our metabolism. Right. Or, so or something or that regulation, because when glucose dropping, mm -hmm. we get that hangry feeling and it might be feeling irritable. Yeah. So that's definitely um, a big change for me. So uh, definitely, yes, it's a gluten-free. I am gluten-free, and I've never had any um, problems. But for people who have not allergies, this is probably not the product that uh, can be applicable. Sarah, what do you think? Yeah, for sure. Unfortunately, nuts just um, play such a pivotal role in you know, getting the exactly right acid balance, um, amount of fat that they provide, while also being very portable. Um, so there's a lot of different pieces that go in. And the, it's not just a matter of calories and macronutrients. It's also a matter of the kind of fibers. It's the kind of fats that are in there, um, and the kind of where the you know, even though it's all animal, excuse me, it's all plant-based protein, what does the amino acid profile look like? And so when we start really playing around with that too much, that becomes a lot more difficult and like not can't guarantee any results. And plus a bulk of the calories for the day are coming from nut-based products. Yeah. So. so it's definitely not applicable for people with and nuts allergies. Um, but I just want to say a couple of words about their fiber content uh, in, the, in the product. Definitely the fiber that is used, and it's mostly inulin, that promotes, um, it, it's considered to be a prebiotic of food for the microbiome that you currently, that we are harboring in our um, intestines. Uh, it definitely changes the microbiome. Even over five days time, we, I, I notice change in my um, cravings, in my uh, satiety level, um, so yeah, and, and, and definitely has a lot of good amount of fiber. I mean, not a lot, but good amount of fiber yeah. does promote a beneficial microbiome in the gut. Yeah. And one of the things that were done in that regard. So interestingly, the, um, um, you know, you may know there's a event on Monday with Dr. Mark Houston, who just completed a study looking at four cycles of prolon. Um, compared to a Mediterranean diet, and the microbiome is something that was measured with that. So that data hasn't um, been fully analyzed, but it's super exciting. I can say, though, for myself, I, 
you know, I was a typical celiac patient who's also, you know, can't have dairy, can't have um, soy, can't have a bunch of other things. And I had a very long list of foods that I, my stomach just, not necessarily that I was um, allergic to, but I just didn't tolerate. And I mean, especially like hummus was one of them and I loved hummus. Um, so after several cycles, one of the things that I found is like, I could eat a little bit of hummus and now I can eat my weight in hummus. And so I think that there's a lot of things going on inside there that, you know, that is, um, that positively impacts the gut and how we can, how we break down food. Right. Yeah. Good. So, um, I think we're coming down to our um, to, to the end of our lecture, but if anyone has any questions, please just raise your hand and, or type it down or just unmute yourself and ask a question. Um, one more thing I just wanted to mention that during their course of the prolone, uh, starting on day two, uh, participants supposed to drink the special drink. It's called L drink, and there's a this bottle in their in their kit. And on, on, on day two, as you can see, there's a a bottle of their L drink, and you're supposed to measure exactly um, the exact amount of fluids based on your body weight. So if you are 160 pounds, this is basically getting about half of this bottle and you mix it in there in this plastic bottle and you fill it up with the water and this is what you're supposed to drink throughout the day and what it does it helps to utilize the the, the breakdown of the fat triglycerides um so therefore you you, you the, the the melting fat from from the body becomes the dominant source of energy production so instead of breaking down the protein, we breaking down actively breaking down fat, and it will be because of that of this drink. So it's definitely a revolutionary approach in the weight loss um, arena, but also it helps me to uh, not to feel hungry. So I just drink that, and uh, my satiety is um, in, in a really good level. Um, some people would definitely feel hungry on, on this, especially the first time around, but drinking a lot of water helps to um, quench that hunger, hungry uh, state. And I always remember what, Sarah, you taught me. Uh, you always say that if you're really hungry, just eat as much as you can from the box and go to sleep. <laughs> it never <laughs> happens to me. <laughs> but I always remember like, oh, just eat everything and go to bed early. And it always helps me, you know, like if I put that head in my, uh, that thought in my head, like, oh, I can just go to bed early. It helps me to tolerate it longer. Absolutely. And the interesting thing is, is like, as you go through cycle to cycle, a lot of that starts to get better. Um, so even if you guys, you know, anybody decides when you do the first cycle, regardless of the experience that you have, if it's a little bit difficult, um, you, the more metabolically flexible you become and the more you kind of expose yourself to this kind of stress, the better it adapts to it and becomes easier and easier. Yeah. So there's another question we didn't answer about what types of food are in the packets. So usually your breakfast consists of this nut uh, protein bar, or it's a nut bar, which is really delightful and actually delicious. This is became my um, my regular breakfast, my regular uh, lunch actually. And then for lunch for the lunch time, there's a soup that you need to make on your own. So I like the point that you need to actually get involved into cooking your meal, either it's a lunch or dinner. So for lunch or dinner, you have a variety of different soups. Some soups can be cooked within two minutes uh, and they can be microwaved. I prefer to do it on the stove. Um, so for example, this is the butternut squash soup, which is really easy to cook two minutes. And then for dinner, you have this black bean soup mix, which you need to cook for 12 minutes. And they usually accompany it by either kale crackers that are delicious, especially when you're fasting, they're delicious. And, and not, not only, but also olives. 
there's a, some uh, beautiful, delicious olives that are uh, that is a part of your uh, daily intake as a snack or as a part of your lunch um, plan. There's plenty of um, some days you'll take uh, some of the supplements. Um, in this case, it's algal oil, which is your omegas, omega threes, and some multi minerals and multi uh, vitamins. And there's a plenty of a really delicious teas that are herbal teas, like a spearmint tea or peppermint tea uh, or hibiscus, which I love uh, very much. And you can, you're welcome to drink your own tea as long as it's not uh, caffeinated. Am I right, Sarah? Yes, that's correct. So you can get do one cup of coffee a day. Um, and outside of that, that's the, about the limit on caffeine. So explore all the different herbal teas that you might see at, you know, David's tea. So during the prolong, during those five days, you need to stop taking all supplements, but you continue your pharmaceutical medication. So if you are on blood pressure medication or cholesterol medications or on, um, some, you know, you're in, in insulin. Well, insulin would, would be probably, we would need to discuss it individually. So contact me if you would like to discuss that. Or diabetic medication need to be, might need to be adjusted. So that would be an individual situation. But um, you stop all the supplements, but you continue your pharmaceuticals. Okay? And, and you drink plenty of water because definitely it will help to tolerate the hunger, but the hunger really um, probably was only in the first two days. After two days, you really don't feel hungry at all. I mean, at least I don't don't feel that hungry. So, and by the end of the course, I, I can I even have some things left over in the box because uh, I just can't finish it. Yeah. So, if you um, interested in participating in our group. Fasting mimicking diet that we're gonna uh, we're gonna do on July 27th. Please contact uh, the office or contact me directly through the portal, patients portal, and we'll send you all the supportive uh, documentation and emails so we can all get together and talk about our experiences. All right, and I don't think we have any other questions. Yeah, so thank you so much for participation. Thank you, Sarah, for uh, joining us and answering some of the questions. And I hope everybody is having a wonderful weekend. Get outside, get some sunshine, practice social distancing, and wash your hands. And stay healthy. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Dr. K. My pleasure, Nerissa. Thank you. I start on the 27th. I have my kit. We'll, we'll do it together. Okay. Thank you. Have a good one. I'll bye send bye. you the information. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm.